Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Dynamic change in the history of Aternum last night as the forces of Gorilla Town secure the swamps of Reekwater. Over before the starting horns stopped echoing across the region, Gorilla Town were quick to call it a night and were unavailable to comment on the outcome. Speaking of calling it a night, KOTT News were able to secure a brief word from JDB's representatives as they were heading out to prepare for more New World League action. An outer hold for the duration of the fight tonight. Were you able to hold out, after, uh, hold outcast out to your liking tonight? Yeah, we were. We gave up the, and then you know, we just did business on uh, what a point, and yeah, it was just, it was a good war for JDB. I can't say the same for outcast, but yeah, we did our job here on El Dorado, you now hold three of the Central Corridor regions, but the tax payouts aren't quite exactly the same. Do you still consider that to be a victory condition, or do you have ambitions to spread out across the island? Uh, I think right now, with all, like, a lot of us are in our own companies with the league and doing stuff and leads and all that, like, we're just, we're just chilling. I don't think we're going to push anytime soon. Yeah, we might, we might push, but right now we're just chilling. All of us are just chilling, folks on draft, and just the league and just having... You know, having fun with that. Despite their victory in Monarch's Bluff, Gorilla Town members were reeling from the emotional trauma after the battle. Congratulations on your victory here in Monarch's Bluff, able to hold out the forces of Viva la Resistance in their entirety. Would you care to take us through what you think you saw out there tonight? John, I don't, don't want to... I'm going to have PTSD from that one, John. I saw some crazy things, John. I saw, I saw Andrew just getting... I mean, they were doing mean things to him over on the A point. It was, he was just crying. It was, it was really sad. I don't think I could survive that again. Oh my, do you think we might need to get you some grief counseling here so we can look into this? Uh, no. Uh, but, uh, I, you know what, I'm not gonna BM, alright? Maybe, uh, maybe they should go for, like, uh, Weaver's Fen, you know? Or, uh... Morningdale. I think that would be like a more apt target. The nightcap fight results in a full hold as the newcomers of the island walk away with some valuable experience. How'd it go down out there? What do you think you accomplished tonight? I honestly think we accomplished a lot, you know, as a company, you know, as our, our first war out there. And, you know, we were, you know, we were going up against the uh, brick wall of Gorilla Town and... You know, we, we were hoping to get a little bit further, but it was a great learning experience, and it won't be the last that you see of us. I, I can promise you that, John. Uh, Viva La Resistance will be making a comeback, so it's back to the drawing board for now, and we'll uh, get it all we'll get it all going. Well, I look forward to your next endeavor, of course. I'm sure having a practice session against one of the stronger companies on the island isn't going to be easy, but it, it lets you see where you need to grow. 100% John and that's what you know we had in mind when it was coming down to this it was you know hey you know we can go up against the top and okay, if we yeah. end up losing to them you know we can at least learn a lot and I've got a lot I've learned tonight and I feel a lot of our guys have learned a lot as well so super excited to kind of go back and start honing in our skills and I, I can promise them uh, we'll be back all right we'll be keeping an eye out for Viva Larissa's adults attempting again here soon thank you very much for stopping to take the time to talk to me my friend more breaking news as KOTT investigative teams were searching the deserts of Brimstone, discovering a new clue revealing the history of the dunes. Following the lead, KOTT news crews were able to identify a new adversarial force that the citizens will need to be defended from. Citizens attempting to confront this new arch nemesis should exercise extreme caution as they appear to be members of the Firestaff Union. KOTT news will bring you more on this story as it develops. Returning to our ongoing coverage of the Season 2 bingo activities, you know your number one source for news were able to get their first bingo, but we may be focusing quantity over quality this time in order to secure at least 100 cards. An unfortunate breach in Ebonscale Reach last night, crippling workshop services in the Hamlet. Relief efforts are already underway to restore the resort destination, and citizens wishing to assist are encouraged to do so this afternoon. Citizens wishing to make a difference against the corruption should be alert for another 15% chance of invasion tonight in Morningdale and possibly more. Another submission for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it 
is cardboard. Tonight, the Covenant forces of Exdia assail the syndicate members of Why is for Yupi for control of the always contentious Restless Shore. Exdia come bearing a familiar banner as the forces formerly known as hideouts rebrand for this quick assault on their neighbor to the east. But why is for UV have consolidated their forces into the keep atop the mud hill and stand ready with full force to defend the remaining homeland. We'll have any late breaking outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been war correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Dynamic change in the history of Eternum last night as On Ice celebrates their birthday with a victory in Restless Shore. KOTT News were on the scene with the birthday boy and got their reactions. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday on ice. Congratulations on your victory here in Restless Shore into the fort with about 18 minutes, 15 minutes left to spare, I guess. But the big news today is it's your birthday. So happy birthday. Thank you, thank you. Happy birthday, on us! Happy birthday, baby! Birthday. <laughs> so how about this birthday gift? Could you have thought of anything better for today? Happy birthday! Oh, Happy no, birthday, man. This is, it, it's great. It's great. Honestly. Mommy? We had a good time tonight. Well, I, you know, I, you did great. Happy birthday. I hope that, uh, is there anybody out there that you think stood out in their performance? Uh, I got a shout out. Uh, my boy, uh, Brusty. G A uh, Warhammer G A over there. Uh, in main comms, you let me know after the war that he Thanks pulled on. down, like, the entire kill squad. I, think, I believe he said he pulled down, like, seven people off the walls. So I gotta give my, my boy Bless a, a big shout out. Well, is there uh, anything, any more ambitions now that you've got this region? You know, you've been, uh, Dog Down has come and, uh, across the northern roads into Weaver's Fin. Are you gonna be able to fall back in time and defend your region there? Uh, absolutely. We are not at all afraid of Dog Down. We, we're excited for it, man. We plan on two-point holding them. Uh, let's see what they got. Returning to our ongoing coverage of the Season 2 track, some unusual issues bogging down advancement, but perhaps the overnight patch will alleviate that frustration. Quickly to the weather today, and once more the sun will continue its streak of rotating around Eternum. But look out after sundown, when coastal storms will give rise to a 30% chance of corruption invasion. Another roster submission for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight, Brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Tonight, the Marauders of Dogged Down assault the Covenant converts of Happy Birthday on Ice for control of the island's primary oil reserves of Weaver's Fin. Dogged Down forces march down the road from their home base in Morningdale, maintaining the high ground as they swoop in to lay siege to the fort. But happy birthday on ice weren't caught off guard by this neighborly visit and rotate their armies through the northeastern territories back onto defense. Be sure to tune in for complete coverage and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been war correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Eternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Eternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night as the forces of Hideout managed to hold off the Marauders of Dog Down in Weaver's Fin. KOTT News were on the scene and spoke with the victors after the fight. My name is Fallen. Yeah, but you did not fall. Ironically, you were able to hold the Weaver's Fin fort for the entire duration, keeping them outside of the fort entirely. How do you feel the fight went tonight? Uh, I feel as if it went very good, very good, very good, very good. Well, uh, anybody out there who stood out in their performance for you tonight? Um, someone in particular? Probably, uh, yappers, I'd say. Well, tell me, friend, what are your ambitions now that you have these two regions locked up? Now that we have all these territories and stuff, we're up on the come up. We're planning on, like, scheduling a fight versus JDB and Gorilla Town, and we're really going for the top dogs now. <laughs> An unfortunate breach in Brightwood last night, resulting in moderate damage to infrastructure in the hamlet. KOTT News volunteered to assist okay. in Cutlass uh, Keys, but corruption forces overwhelmed gate repairs there and spilled in as well. Citizens are encouraged to visit town mission boards.
to assist in community repairs. Looking at the weather for today, and once more the sun will rise and shine all afternoon, keeping corruption at bay. But look out after sundown when the humidity drops and gives rise to another 20% chance of invasion later in the night. Another roster submission for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Tonight, the syndicate members of Z is for Zarita attack the Marauders of Dogged Down for control of the rain-drenched mountain region of Morningdale. Z is for Zarita execute their right to rematch, returning to reclaim their holdings in the name of the great Zarita. But will they make the correct adjustments to secure the win? Dog down forces turning around quickly after claiming the region four days ago. They're confident in their ability to repeat their successful efforts again. Be sure to tune in for complete coverage and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the history of Aternum last night as an unexpected corruption strike delays the evening's war until tonight. KOTT News were able to reconnect with a participant in the event who was understandably frustrated. Is it still ticking away whilst everyone was kicked out of the environment? <laughs> no, it like full reset. Like they, uh, the, the, the war was basically rescheduled till tomorrow. So this exact time tomorrow, in 24 exact hours, it'll be, it'll be the same war. It'll be, they, they don't have to repush, which is good. Um, so, but yeah. That's very unfortunate for them and very unfortunate to us. You know, these we, we spend like six hours a day trying to get a raid plan and all this stuff together, and then uh, that happens. It's kind of a big L, but happens. Yeah, uh, completely unfortunate. And 24 hours from now, that would put you right in the middle of the week of hell as four simultaneous invasions will be ongoing at the same time. We've already uh, experienced how difficult that is to fill, so wow. It's going to be a rough night tomorrow night for all of Eternum. I, I do hope that you guys will be prepared to take it on tomorrow. I guess there's no night off for JC tomorrow night. No, none at all. But you know what? And even if we're not, I mean, they will be. And honestly, we will be. It'll, be, it'll still be a good war. All about the fun. Indeed. I know we'll be able to, you will be able to come back and try it again. Will this impact your, uh, your participation in any practice wars on the uh, PTR server tomorrow? It, uh, it could. Um, luckily, with us having a 12 EST time, um, odds are incredibly high that we'll be... Some of us might be a little late, but other than that, I think we should be fine. All right, my friend. Well, uh, unexpected delay once again this week on one of the wars. I do uh, hope that you're able to uh, take that energy into tomorrow night, and I wish you the best of luck tomorrow. Yeah, we will. We will. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Not the only corruption-based inconvenience, as earlier evening reports of the Season 2 rewards track being inaccessible came spilling in. Things appear to have been corrected as the quest for 100 cards continues. Word out of the Southern Observation Post established in Cutlass Keys as community leaders have noted an unusual uptick in corruption portal strength. Corruption invasion forces have also been notably more aggressive lately, leading some to speculate, have they been infused with the spice? And if so, what does this mean about the angry Earth activities in Old First Light? And the intentions of our first interviewee, Adiana Theron? And what will it mean tonight during the four simultaneous reports of invasion happening again, as citizens begin to call for leaders to stagger their time slots? Tonight's corruption-delayed simulated fantasy combat resolution is still brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. With special thanks to the Craft Services crew, if you'd like to support KOTT News, Patreon is currently the best way. Tonight, the syndicate members of Freshly Homeless attack the Marauders of Dogged Down for control of the rain-drenched mountain region of Morningdale. Fort blocked one minute into the opening horns last night. Freshly Homeless return with a renewed energy to try again, hopeful that things will proceed without interruption. Dog Down forces, equally frustrated by the events last night, will be showing up ready to release that pent-up rage on the enemies approaching their northern gates. 
We'll have any late-breaking outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the dynamic of Aternum last night, as the marauders of Dog Down hold on to the river objective for 22 minutes straight. KOTT News caught up with Dog Down leadership after the fight to go over the outcome. Sure, you had to fall back onto the riverside with about 21 minutes left. But from there, it was all yours. At about 20, 12 minutes left, they had a 99% push. And maybe if they'd have taken it, you would have gotten into Fort and it would have gone a different way. But they did not. You held at 99%, and that was all she wrote. Would you care to take us through that fight? Yeah, so uh, I was leading Group 9 Kill Squad, and uh, I just went ahead and made the executive, called all the bows onto the point. We just soldiered up on there, perfectly eye-framing all abilities. Uh, we got a few kills, and, you know, that's all she wrote. We got right back out to Oppo after taking the point back down, straight back to bragging. Yeah, indeed, that was all she wrote. And what about you, Creatine? Were you seeing anything different out there tonight? Well, um... I'll be honest, my role this one was not as fun as normally. I had to basically contest all of their great swords. Um, so my war sucked. It was mostly they pushed us uh, into last point, and we just held last point really well. I think we calmed their kill squad, trying to wrap into Oppo really well. Ultimately, um, I think we just had a lot of a lot of bruisers specifically show up. Uh, their healers were not free at all, I don't think. Um, we were handling our road pretty well, so I think just all in all... We, uh, we showed up and we were ready. Indeed. Was there anybody out there who stood out tonight individually? Yeah, so I, I we had a bruiser, Stallion. Stallion went like 17-0 and 0 as a bruiser. Um, that's a pretty that's a pretty crazy stat line in a war like that and a very competitive, like, uh, really good skill, a lot of skill on both sides. That's uh, pretty abnormal, so that's a pretty major performance. I know we had a lot of teams dedicated to hitting healers, a lot of bruisers with... Uh, water you know with broom handles with watermelons duct tape to the ends so uh they were doing really well i think just overall a good performance by everyone uh, excellent well yep. there's a lot of familiar names on the uh, other side of the field tonight does that inspire you to uh, possibly go out there and try anything else this is for this is for you sir um you know we are a fairly newer company over here we've just been tightening everything up. I think that uh, we're going to sit back, mod review, learn from it, see uh, what went right this war, and improve, and then uh, on to bigger and better things. Well, is there uh, anything else that you might want to say to the citizens of Eternum after this uh, victory? Uh, I hear Everfall's a nice home. Oh, <laughs> Oh, okay. Okay, well, uh, or, 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 um, you know, he's he's rogue, right? Like, he, you know, he's... I think I think he misspoke there personally. That's just what I think. But uh, I mean, I think what he meant to say was that uh, we we really appreciate competitive wars. They didn't they did not overly murk, um, and they they very well could have, um, and that war could have gone very differently. So thank you to them for uh, not slotting twenty five S plus big hitters. Right? Thanks for leaving a few. <laughs> um, and uh, competitive wars are what we're looking for. However, like uh, we had a couple people outside of the war trying to do some scummy stuff to us beforehand, trying to invite us to uh, an Amrine dungeon, trying to pull people out of the war. Um, <laughs> that's not what we like to see. It uh, it worked. It got a couple of them. L L L ratio, but uh, yeah, GG's good wars. Corruption breaches in two regions last night, causing setbacks in Hamlet infrastructure. Investigations continue into the link between these empowered corrupted forces and the flow of the spice. The all-volunteer forces of the Invasion Response Squad, able to fend off half of the corrupted assaults last night, are beginning to respond to the increased difficulties before them as they prepare for tonight's expected raid on the Western Monarch's Bluff. Two lineup submissions for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it is Cardboard, with special thanks to the Craft Services crew. If you'd like to support KOTT News, Patreon is currently the best way. First up, the Covenant Converts of Farmed Off Fresh assault the vault of JDB's kitchen, attempting to steal away the island's financial capital of Windsward. Farmed Off Fresh decide they have to secure additional funding if they're going to continue advancing on the island. So they've staked out the bank and prepare to make their heist. 
But the security around the fort is unlike any other they have experienced before. As the syndicate powerhouse of JDB's kitchen consolidate their forces into a single defensive effort. Then, the syndicate members of World's former company assail the Covenant converts of Hideout for control of the always contentious Restless Shore. The back and forth between these two companies beginning to look like a legitimate rivalry as the anarchy of the archipelago anews once more. Hideout forces able to rapidly deploy their troops along their controlled trade routes stand ready atop the hill on the distant eastern shore. We'll have any late-breaking outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Aeternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aeternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. Dynamic change in the history of Aeternum last night as an unexpected double declare gives this company can't listen an opportunistic victory out on the mud hill. Unexpected battle in Weaver's Fin submitted in the final moments forced the Covenant to consolidate their holdings. As such, the Zealots opted to preserve their hold on the critical regional hub, maintaining pressure on the neighboring region of Brightwood. KOTT News were in Moon Bay and were able to get reactions from victorious members of the Syndicate. Congratulations on your victory over in mere moments, able to get up the mud hill without any pushback tonight. Would you care to tell us what might have happened out there? Um, I don't know. We were hoping, we were hoping for a war, but we, um, we didn't push fast enough for it to be not a double deck, but we finished too late, I guess. It ended up being a double deck. And yeah, we didn't get the war that we wanted. Well, I'm not exactly sure what happened either, because as far as I could tell, this was the only war they had. Uh, it seemed to me that the Weaver's Fen War, which was uh, late reported to us, was the second war. But maybe that was just a, a snafu in the corruption of late. There's another scheduled downtime tonight, so we'll see what's happening. Hopefully they'll get things sorted out this first, uh, the first week after a, a new uh, update is usually like this, so... Unfortunate, my friend. I'm sorry you didn't get the fight that you wanted out there, but now you're in charge of Restless Shore, and they'll have to come through you, so you definitely get one more fight coming your way, right? Yes, sir. Did you want to say a few words about the fight? I know it was over pretty quickly. <laughs> it was over pretty quickly. Well, you know, we were we were going to try to get blown up by a tag, but we don't listen well, so it didn't happen. Oh, you didn't even get you didn't even get the fun experience of having a little something to do, huh? No, not at all. It was sad. Well, I'm sorry that you didn't get the uh, war experience that you wanted, but it looks like you, you'll at least get one more on defense, right? They have to go through you now. True. Maybe we're coming up at some point. As the night began to wind down, KOTT News were randomly invited to a drum circle performance in the desert, which was unexpectedly cut short by a pesky little nuisance. The concert then devolved into chaos as even more desert-dwelling, musically critical arachnids began showing up to protest the beat. Looking at the weather for today, and once more the sun will help keep things dry as civic leaders get all services up and running again. But once more after sundown, volunteers should heed the call for assistance with a looming chance of corruption invasion across 30% of the island. No submissions for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight. Brought to you by Peace, but we'll have any late-breaking outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News. Hello, Aeternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aeternum's number one source for news. And this is The War Report. No change in the dynamic of Eternum last night, thanks to an evening of peace among the island's great houses. KOTT News took the opportunity to knock out some activity cards en route to ensuring at least 100 get done by the end of the season. Without any fights to report on, KOTT News crews had a rare opportunity to enjoy an early night's rest. But there will be little rest tonight when the corruption invasion forces rise up across 20% of the island. Two roster submissions for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. Up first, 
The Covenant converts of West Wormed attacked the marauders of Dogged Down for control of the northern mountain region of Morningdale. Flying the familiar banners of the island's oil barons, these Covenant forces march into the neighboring region to secure their holy land abutting the northern death wall. But Dog Down have been improving their roster through hard work and gear upgrades and are confident in their ability to retain the rain-drenched region for yet another fight. Then, the legendary hero worshippers of Outcast assault the marauders of Gorilla Town for crown and kingdom of the Western Monarch's Bluff. The grudge match between these two rivals heating up again tonight as Pandacast prepare to push their way into the castle and claim control of the monarchy. But Gorilla Town continue to maintain that the heir to succession must be proven through combat, so will put forth their best effort to vanquish any unfit uprising. We'll have any late-breaking outcomes and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant, KOTT News.